Hey home bakers, it's Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk and very recently I baked a sourdough loaf in a Dutch oven for the first time ever. Let's see how I got on, shall we? And also, if I still stand by stone baking as my preferred method. Roll that theme tune. Hello to you and welcome back to the Bake With Jack YouTube channel where we are right in the middle of a month long sourdough series to celebrate the Real Bread Campaign's sourdough September. I'm enjoying this. Are you enjoying this? Let me know in the comments. Now we all know what we want to achieve when it comes to actually baking our sourdough loaf, right? We want good increase in volume. That's called oven spring, by the way, for two reasons. Firstly, because it's that jump that busts open our crust exactly where we intended it, exactly where we cut it, not at the edge or underneath or somewhere spontaneous, wherever it fancies, and we've covered that before. And secondly, because we want our bread to be light and airy. If we can maximize the oven, and spring we are maximizing volume and so therefore creating a light and airy loaf of bread. We also want a crisp and crunchy crust out of our sourdough loaf that is properly golden. Is all this too much to ask? So how do we get there? Easy. Immediate high heat in contact with your loaf's supple derriere and steam. So we can bake on a hot stone using hot water to create steam like I've always historically done, or we can bake in an enclosed environment allowing the loaf to generate its own steam as it bakes. Enter the Dutch oven. This is a cast iron Dutch oven with a lid, and that's important because without a lid, it's no longer an enclosed environment. It's also heavy and that's important too because if it was something light when you put the dough in it would immediately suck the heat out of whatever the thing is. Instead it stays hot pushing that heat into the underside of our loaf creating maximum oven spring for us. I'm going to put it down. So first let's take a look at how I've been using this thus far and afterwards I'll come back and let you know which is my preferred method of baking my sourdough and why. Cut to the table. And here we are at the table where my Dutch oven is in the oven and it's preheating. On 230 degrees C which is about 446 Fahrenheit uh, for about 30 minutes or so to get nice and hot. I have my loaf here and I've shaped it and proved it up round and I've rather cleverly made a kind of sling with a piece of parchment paper. As you can see, I've draped heavy cloths all over my kitchen side just to make sure the pot doesn't leave nice scorch marks everywhere, which it may or not may not do, I don't know. Uh, but hey, let's not find that out today, yeah? Here I was in two minds about what to do first, whether I should cut the loaf with my grignette before getting the Dutch oven out or get the Dutch oven out first and then cut my bread. Either way, something is left sitting. If I cut the loaf, it's gonna be left sitting while I get the Dutch oven out. If I get the Dutch oven out, it's gonna be left potentially cooling a little bit while I cut the loaf. I just did it this way around. I cut the loaf first and then I got the Dutch oven out ready to go. Using my homemade sling, I will lower it all the way down to the bottom of the hot pot. I've been spritzing with a little bit of water just to guarantee an extra humid environment, in theory, for a better lift and a better crust. It just makes sense to get a bit of extra moisture in there. I pop the lid back on. Don't forget to use a cloth because it's properly hot. And I bake lid on for 20 minutes on the same preheated temperature. After that time, I'll take it out. And this is where it gets properly wicked because you don't get this bit when you're stone baking a loaf. Remove the lid and have a little celebration because things are looking amazing. This reveal is really a nice moment. Things are looking wicked so far. I'll return it to the oven for a further 20 minute bake on the same temperature with the lid off to get some good color, bringing the total baking time to my usual 40 minutes start to finish. And here it is. There is no doubt that this is a triumphant loaf. It is beautiful, right? I'm so pleased with it. It's risen nicely. It's properly crusty and light and airy. It's great bread. But get this, so are my stone baked loaves. This is one that I just baked in the oven just before this one for comparison purposes. And I was wondering whether to do a comparison or not. I wasn't sure about it, so I baked one off. Anyway, and what you'll see here is that yes, there probably are some minute 
very, very slight differences if you looked closely. But the point is, I don't really care all that much. The Dutch oven technique works, which is brilliant. And in my eyes, both these loaves are raw in success. So then, I'm making a decision whether to stone bake or Dutch oven bake, where satisfaction lies in both, then we need to take other things into account. So here's some pointers for both to help you out with your decision. If you are stone baking, you need a baking stone, uh, a deep tray, a kettle to put your hot water in, and a peel, like that. You can do multiple loaves at once if you're stone baking. The most I've ever done is four loaves in one oven, just like that, on two stones. Results are more likely to vary depending on the characteristics of your oven. Some ovens keep steaming really well, for example, and others don't. And all ovens without exception have hot spots. Buying the kit for stone baking is probably works out cheaper if you've already got a kettle and it's multi-purpose in the sense that you can use it for pizzas and pitas and ciabattas and baguettes and anything else that you wanna bake. It's an excellent investment if you ask me. If you're baking in the Dutch oven, you need a Dutch oven. You don't need a tray or a kettle or a thing or a, the other thing that I said. Steaming up your oven is not required, so faff factor is saved there. However, there is an element of faff in the handling and taking the lid off of screaming pots and stuff like this, which makes me a little bit, ooh, ah! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can only bake one loaf at a time in a Dutch oven. So if you're baking multiple loaves, you're gonna to have to do one after another. It's gonna take way longer. Plus, you're kind of restricted upon shape. If you've got a round Dutch oven, you're making round loaves. If you've got a long oval shaped Dutch oven, you're making oval loaves and there's no room for pizzas or baguettes or beautiful batards or anything of that nature. A Dutch oven probably will cost you more, but it's multi-purpose in the sense you can use it to make casseroles and stews and slow cook a last piece of beef brisket. If you're that way inclined, uh, it's a good investment in that sense. And so to summarize, if you are making multiple loaves like me or keen to crack a variety of breads, then stone baking is probably the way to go. And for those of you out there wanting to bust out consistent single loaves on the regular and the same shape and size, then using a Dutch oven is probably a much more reliable way to go. And here's a bonus prediction for you. If you are beginning to make sourdough for the first time and enjoying your learning journey, welcoming it into your life with open arms, then I reckon sooner or later down the line, you'll probably wind up wanting to have both anyway, even if it's way down the line like me. You'll likely begin to value flexibility and convenience and then with a newfound hunger to learn new methods and techniques sooner or later, you'll probably do it all. So if you currently have neither option and you're trying to decide upon which one to get first, stop faffing around, choose one and commit. I'd go with a stone and go bake that bread. Listen, thank you so much for stopping by for your weekly bread making tip. Click like if you liked this video and I look forward to seeing you next time and the next time and the next time and the next time after that if you Click subscribe. Bye-bye. And there it is, your third video in this year's Sourdough September series. I hope you're enjoying these. Remember, if you don't want to miss any videos or any content I do at all, you can sign up to the weekly Home Bakers Bulletin and it will all be delivered straight to your inbox every single Thursday. See ya.